All right, what is up, everybody? A great three-hour edition of Monday Night Raw is in the books. A three-hour edition of Monday Night Raw that took me four hours to watch. I had to take a little bit of a break during the middle. It wasn't because it was bad or anything like that, but uh, I just realized how late it was. 12, 15 at night. A little bit later than I thought it was going to be. Um, honestly, you can go through and highlight uh, the three best things that happened on this show. Honestly, with the last three things, I guess you can say, that happened on the show. Um, CM Punk came out to the ring, grabbed the mic, just flat out told Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar get their butts to the ring because he was ready to fight. Uh, of course, Paul Heyman came down with a microphone by himself, delivered one hell of a back and forth uh, with CM Punk. Finally, he said it's clobbering time. Brock Lesnar came down to the ring and it was on. Um, CM Punk, honestly, uh, this is the uh, the groundwork for Punk versus, uh, I am about to say Punk versus Heyman, Punk versus Lesnar for SummerSlam 2013. Uh, this will more than likely be, I, w I would guess and I would hope, the main event of the show, the closing last match of the night. I'm all for John Cena and Daniel Bryan, but I think this match is going to be bigger. Um, hopefully Brock Lesnar still has the appeal that he's going to be the main event of the show that he is on, uh, besides for you know, WrestleMania with uh, The Rock being there. Um, it, honestly, uh, just looking at the two guys side by side, it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit weird for me. I really want CM Punk to win this match, um, but when you see these guys, um, you know, stand face to face, Lesnar's going to kill this guy. CM Punk, the only way he's easy to win this match if he was able to pull off some heelish sort of backdoor tactics uh, to cheat to win against him. And um, babyface CM Punk, I guess, isn't going to do that. It doesn't really make sense to strap the cape and put the Superman thing on him uh, and really just take down the huge monster. Just let... Uh, you know, Brock kill him, and then we'll uh, go from there. We can pick the pieces up. Maybe it'll humble CM Punk a little bit more in the people's eyes. But uh, on paper right now, Brock's going to kill this dude. Uh, from there, uh, Brad Maddox uh, told Chris Jericho that he be, he would be wrestling Rob Van Dam. RVD made his return back to Monday Night Raw, and honestly, looking in the ring when he came out there, it was like turn back the clock night. It was like Van Dam honestly never left us. Uh, he looked like he just fit so well in that arena with the uh, WWE ring and attire around him. Why he ever left this, I have no idea. You know, on paper, it just looks so easy uh, to take those TNA schedules, but you just end up going there to die as other stars like Mark Hinton. Nah, fuck me. Mr. Anderson has uh, found out by heading over there. Um, it might look like greener pastures. You might be able to work less and do... More of what you want to do on the side, but uh, if there's no WWE, WWE machine to push you over there, you're just who you are. I mean, Jeff Hardy might be a big star living off his WWE name over there, but Jeff Hardy isn't the star he would be if he was in WWE. It just, I, I don't want TNA to die. TNA's good shit over there, but just, what would it be if just WWE was able to get Batista, Jeff Hardy, Hogan will only have to come back for one night. Maybe even bring back the Dudleys and just say that they have the biggest, best roster WWE has ever had. Uh, those are pretty much the only guys that are out there. Of course, you'd want to bring Flair back for some role or something like that, but I don't know. Those are the only guys I can think that are being held hostage uh, that are WWE guys over there in TNA. Um, then the whole storyline of the show, basically Brad Maddox... Uh, you know, being his first night in charge, told John Cena that he was going to be able to pick his own opponent. Uh, if he was a heel, he would have picked somebody such as, like, Hornswoggle or Heath Slater, uh, Jinder Mahal, somewhere along those likes of just... Those guys, like, when you're testing out a new video game, like, the first time you pop in WWE 13 or WWE, um, uh, what is it, 2K14, whenever that comes out, and you just want to make sure that you know how to... Wrestle and get around. You don't always pick the hardest guy out there. You pick the guy you want to wrestle with, whoever your favorite guy is, be John Cena or The Rock, or I guess you can even say Ultimate Warrior now. You always go fight that one guy that you know is not going to beat you. So that way, you know, you don't start out this new game on a loss and get all pissed off. Um, 
But basically, John Cena is John Cena. He looked up and down the roster. He watched all the matches. A lot of guys came to him and uh, gave uh, their you know opinion that they should be it. Even the uh, great Khali came out there and talked to him in whatever that native tongue he speaks, asking for the shot. Uh, fat chance in hell there, Khali. But uh, Daniel Bryan, Mr. Yes, 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 prevailed from the back of the crowd. And uh, the match has been set. Uh, it's a little bit weird. I know Daniel Bryan is the most over guy with the crowd, um, you know, on the whole roster. Honestly, everybody in the crowd loves this guy. Anybody who's anybody, it's hard to find anybody in the world that says I hate Daniel Bryan. He's entertaining, puts on good matches. Uh, his stick on the mic is is able to get with everybody. Loves chanting yes, yes, yes. Um, everything about him is pretty cool. I don't like the t-shirt that much. It doesn't look like something I would wear. Music is pretty badass, but, um, good, good shit. Um, but he's only been real hot for, like, a month. I mean, he got that win the last match, uh, or the last Raw of June. So he's been on a winning streak, I guess you can say, for July. One month, he's not actually, like, the the got the longest winning streak or anything like that going on he just you know he beat randy orton uh he did this he did that i guess you can say he even lost because he didn't win the money in the bank but you never really look at it as the guy who loses because there is no pinfalls or submissions or disqualifications just one guy climbs up there and grabs the ladder but um i don't know it's gonna be a fun match it's gonna be good i'm sure these guys will, will figure something out to get this over hopefully it's not just for the tv show the uh, total diva show which i guess is starting in two weeks and uh that's gonna be different uh, i saw the chicks that are on the show the new ones at least for the first time tonight uh the white one with the red hair looks pretty hot so uh hopefully that'll be able to keep my interest uh, i'll watch it as long as it's not horrible um uh, other other matches on the show, Randy Orton versus Fandango honestly really surprised me. That was the first match of the night. It started out really really good. They went to commercial. I went to the kitchen to uh, uh, put my plate. I'm sorry, put my plate of food down and um, grab a drink out of the fridge. I came back. The match I came back from commercial and I just wasn't into it. It was one of those matches where the commercial killed it and it just wasn't down for me. Our Truth and the Shield. Um, no, I apologize. Uh, that he was the Wyatts. Um, Mark Henry came out, gave a speech, sort of like he was turning babyface. I was almost thinking he was coming out there to retire again. I'm like, hey, Mark, we ain't falling for that one again. Uh, to make the exclamation point on the babyface turn, hopefully he'll put the red tights on and just start going back to the Kool-Aid character because that's the guy that I'm missing. That whole attire that he wore when he was tagging with, with MVP the whole time. Uh, Shield came out. Kick the shit out of him. Uh, then from there, uh, I guess you can say that the um, uh, the Wyatts came out to beat the hell out of our truth. Um, I thought it was a little weird. They show the Wyatts in the back about to come out, and it's all dark. He lights a lantern, says they're coming, blows the lantern out, and the next time we see him when they're walking down the aisle, he has the lantern lit again. So he lights a candle, blows it out to only light it again. I don't know if maybe they just haven't found a way for them to get out of the room with the lantern and shoot it to where you can't see that they're walking through the gorilla position or wherever they shoot this for a pre-shot. But uh, I'm sure they'll figure it out. And that's just me honestly overthinking it. And someone will leave in the comments, you overthink everything. But it's how I watch the show. Um... Uh, Alberto Del Rio and Dolph Ziggler fought in a, uh, I guess you can say, forgettable match because it ended. Uh, uh, well, this one didn't end by DQ. I thought it did, but now that I'm thinking about it, it didn't end by DQ. That was last night. This one ended when just flat out Ziggler got pinned uh, by uh, Del Rio. Basically, he had him beat uh, one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Uh, Ziggler was going to get the win. I honestly don't know if this was the title match or non title match or not, but. Uh, they didn't really hype it up like he was going to win the title. But when the count was two, uh, AJ hit the ring bell, uh, making everybody stop the match, thinking that the match was over and um, that they the ref had called for the bell early. And then she just stood there looking at him like some chick in some freaking you know horror movie where she's stalking the, uh, the, the good-looking guy 
back in the high school class. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. I was going to say The Grudge, but that's the chick that climbed out of a TV, I think. Um, she just looked, she, she looked pretty bad. Not bad, but she looked pretty scary. I guess scary might be the way, but, you know, not terrifying. Yeah, fuck it, whatever. Uso's got to win. They beat the real Americans. Uh, Pin Cesaro by a roll-up. I was surprised. I thought if anybody in this group would be taking pins, it would be, um, Jack Swagger. First thing I thought about was freaking ID 8's, uh, prediction for the, uh, count of, for the, uh, the Observer 2013 prediction show, whatever it is, saying that um, uh, Cesaro would be a first-time uh, what is it? World Heavyweight Champion. And we're running out of time. It's almost uh, it's almost August, and uh, we're counting down the days in the last few days of the year. I'm running out of gas. Uh, Damian Sandow versus Christian. Christian got the big pop. He also got the win. Also really surprised me. I was chatting back and forth with the yeah, yeah, is this. I was like really surprised they had uh, Sandow lose. And the first thing he said, do you remember Ziggler with the money in the bank? Well, yep. Uh, I guess he's going to be losing a lot. Hope you enjoy laying on your back, Sandow. Uh, Naomi versus Brie Bella. I'm reading this off a review. I didn't even know that match happened. I had no clue. I have no memories of it. But... Overall, really good show. Really forward to looking forward to seeing what they're doing to, to do for SmackDown this week and build up some more uh, stuff for SummerSlam. I'm all fired up. I'm still very surprised I got those tickets for SummerSlam access. It's going to be a blast. Uh, thank you, everybody, for helping me out along the way and watching this video. And uh, if you watch almost 12 minutes of a Raw review, uh, I honestly really appreciate it. And uh, I owe you a big thank you somewhere along the way. Have fun, guys.